Hello everybody, so in today's video you will see we have on the back a post driver. We are today going to be doing some fencing. So over the last probably eight, nine, ten years uh, we've been putting um, on and off effort into getting our fences up together, uh, both the boundary fences and the internal fences. I'm concentrating slightly more on the boundaries just to keep, just to make sure we are all secure. Um, so what we're going to do today, we are going to fence a run of hedge, that is a boundary fence. So we started preparations for this back in September um, when the hedges were being cut and this hedge was cut back, what we call cut it back hard, so to take uh, all, the, all the new growth plus a bit of old growth off so that we can get the fence line back real nice and tight to the hedge. So this is the run we're doing today, you can see just laying the stakes out now. We're going up to that corner. The corner upwards is already done. So we did that a couple of years ago. So hopefully three of us on the job. It shouldn't take too long once we get going. And we have now got it down to a bit of an hour. Um, Dad sits on the tractor, moves the tractor around. Um, we bang the posts in and then we pull the wire up and strain it as a long run. And then once the wire is strained, we just staple to each post and it gets a nice straight tight fence. So. Let's get out and see what's going on. So it's just quickly worth saying, this is the field that was spring wheat last year. And then we did the no, I think, did we call it no plow grass seeding? Um, and then we cut it for first cut. It's been grazed a couple of times. It's ready for grazing again now. The dry cows will be coming out here. Um, something else is just worth saying, it has been very dry here since, uh, since first cut silage really. So today is the 17th of July. And between the 1st and the 17th we have had some like 90, 91 or 2 millimetres of rain. So it's very welcome and things have started growing again. We have finally got some grass. And we were for a while feeding silage to the milkers. But now the grass has come back, it's caught up. So things are looking good again, much better than last year. So this is, this is what we're going to fence, this run up here just to the corner. And we do use creosote stakes okay so we used to use um, the cheaper version which was tantalized and they're just rubbish basically they don't last they snap off um, these creosote ones they are a lot more expensive but they last years and years longer and um, dad quite often says um, if we ever pull out a fence and we, we find creosoted stakes that were put here on this farm way back in history kind of in the 1930s or 1940s they are creosoted stakes and they're still as good as the day they were put in now these ones probably won't do that but they do a lot better than the tantalized ones so you know you pay a bit more at the start and hopefully it lasts longer we like
stretch was a bit tricky to see, but we have now got all of our stakes in. Uh, the undergrowth is hiding them a little bit. But while we were putting the stakes in, brother set to and he has put in some strainers. So normally we'd use a bigger strainer post, but we haven't got any, so we make do with these. But we do put the props in. So that's what he's been doing. He's been putting the notches in. And then we just come back, set another post on the end of the prop, just to keep it all snug and tight. So what we will do, we'll start at the bottom, strain to this one, and then go on strain to the top one. But we are struggling a little bit uh, to get the get all the posts in level. We're hitting stone. You can see that one there stuck up way high. Um, but when you've got stone down below, not a lot you can do about that. So corners all strained up tight now. Nice and firm, I'll just run the wire out. and what appears to be a good hedge is what my father would have called a wood hedge because it's maple and nut and stuff there's not much thorn in it and cattle will push well, through you can it. see they're making holes in it yeah. now aren't they, well, so. they that's what, why well it's made of stuff that ain't spiky enough yeah it's, it's a, what they used to call what we used to call a wood hedge yeah because there's only wood there's no spikes no, in no. It. 
It's got spikes in it now. That will be up with barbed wire. Yeah. Yes. Right, so we have rolled out the bottom strand. What I'm going to do now is pull that up, staple it to our strainer post, uh, go on to the top one, pull our second kind of half of the bottom one up, and then run the top strand out and staple them up. So, yes. Right, so we're all tensioned up now. We just got to go down and staple into all the posts just to set our height. As you can see at the minute, it's too high, so that'll go down to match the level we want for the bottom strand. And then the foam rings. Mm. Hello. Not half a bit. I'll try to get this wire behind this staple. Oh, all right. Hang on. All right, so it's too tight down the far end, so we've got to slacken a smidge. Enough. Right, that should be do. That should do for tight. Go and start stapling. So just running the second wire out now. It's a very handy little wire dispenser on here. We didn't put this on, we bought this machine second hand. And uh, <coughs> those two, it was just a bit of a water pipe was welded on there when we got it. And uh, it's the kind of thing they ought to put on from new really. It's a very cheap, very simple but very effective way of rolling out some barbed wire. So there we go, all finished, two strands up. Um, like I said, we got our, couldn't get the posts in level, but that's that's stony ground for you. Anyway, so it look, looks nice and tidy. The cows have inspected it. Um, and they're still the right side of the fence. So that's all good news. So there we go, I will say thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.